Okay, let's walk through investigation encoded one. We've recovered a binary and one file image of one. Turns out it's not actually an image. See what you can make of it. It's also found in this folder on the shell server. Note the flag's not in the normal Pico CTF format. So I've downloaded this thing into Ghidra and we'll start over here and look at main. So here's the main method. It's gonna open a flag.txt file and then it's going to encode the flag into this output file. So unlike the ones we've seen before, right, there's no image file that it's appending to or anything. It's just gonna encode the flag into the output file. So let's look at this encode method. So the encode method is gonna loop over the flag and if the remain is not equal to seven, then it puts a zero. So what we'll see with this save is that it's actually writing out a byte at a time, but it gets in a bit of input. So this save is gonna stick some zeros at the end of the file in order to align it on a byte boundary. There's a matrix. And so it first checks to see if the flag is valid and converts it to lower case. So let's look at it as valid for just a second. So is valid only accepts letters and spaces. Okay, so if it's a space, then it's gonna replace it with a curly brace. Otherwise, it's just gonna put it in lowercase. And then we have this matrix. It's going to get an entry out of the matrix from the odd position, an entry out of the matrix from the even position after it subtracts the letter A from the index. So it looks like it's really looking at uh, lowercase letters for the flag here. It does this get value and then it saves. So if we look at this save, so if the remainder is zero, it sets the remainder back to seven and prints a character. Otherwise, it subtracts one from the remainder and multiplies this buffer character, which is uh, the thing that it's going to eventually write out by two and so this is writing out so we've ORed in parameter one so we can like OR in a one or a zero and then multiply by two to shift it left when we reach the end we actually dump it out so we're going to basically this allows us to output a bit at a time all right so from this we have this get value this get value references the secret array it does some sort of crazy shifts and subtracts. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to capture this into a C program. And I'm going to see, because it looks like it's basically doing this encoding one letter at a time. So I'm going to create a C program over here. Well, I've created a C program. And it looks like this is locked up here. Let's try opening that again. So I had to capture the secret array and the matrix array. And so I went through and I copied those bytes out of Ghidra into these two arrays. And I defined sort of the data types that Ghidra seems to be using. It has this U long, which is really an unsigned long, U int, which is really an unsigned int, and byte, which is really just a character. Then I, I grabbed what kind of looked like the main method, or this encode method rather. So I grabbed this matrix and this matrix and this while loop, because it looks like what's going on here is this IVAR, the even entry of the matrix tells it how many bits there are in the encoding. And then this uh, tells it how to reference the secret array in some odd way. Um, I did have to go figure out that the parameter to get value is really local 10. So I copy those two uh, matrix references, the while loop, I do the get value, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this print out a Python dictionary for me so that I can map from letters to the bits associated with those letters. So the squiggle, close squiggle is for the Python dictionary. And then we have the character. I'm going to just do the lowercase letters, colon, then I'm going to have it print out these bits in single quotes. So uh, we get this warning here that there's a shift there of like in a crazy big amount and fortunately that doesn't matter. So we'll do dot mystery five and we'll see that here's the dictionary. So an A gets coded as these bits, B codes as these bits. And this actually really looks like a Huffman code. Huffman code is a prefix code. So no code for any particular letter is a prefix of a code for another letter. And that's going to be really important in making this easy to decode in Python. Because what I'll do is I'll just simply look and see if I find this bit pattern at the beginning. If it does, I just trim it off. And I'll just repeat that through the file. So I'm going to use uh, pwn tools to get a binary string. There's the dictionary that came from my C program. I read the file. I convert it to a string of bits. While my bit string still has bits, I loop through the dictionary. If I find, say for example, this at the beginning, I replace it with a U, and then I trim it off from my bit string. I'm printing the result. The reason for that is there are those extra zeros at the end, so we won't actually ever get rid of the whole string. And so it builds up E, N, C, etc. Like I said, it's in this infinite loop because there are these extra zeros at the end that aren't part of any particular code. But this is my flag. I just need to take that and put it in the Pico CTF format. And there are my points.